Welcome to Generations Papers. Today we're gonna to paint up some crypt horrors. What's up, Miniatures Paintbrush Legion? It's Rob, your host. Go to paint up some crypt horrors. Now, this whole adventure actually began about two years ago when I fell in love with my very first army, which was uh, Malignants. That was the first box set that I ever picked up for Star Collecting. Um, from there, I fell in love with uh, the Legions of Nagash. My second box that I picked up were the Flesh Eater Courts, only because that huge Terrorgeist was absolutely blew my mind on the cover. Uh, right after that, you know, I had Skeletal Warriors and, you know, Archeon the Black drew me in for that one. And I still have those start collecting boxes till this day. Um, but my first love was that Legions of Nagash. And what really offset it is recently, um, uh, well, recently I picked up, well, one of these, uh, Vargeist box sets from, uh, my hobby store and it was just on discount. It was actually got this one on sale, uh, from a store and, you know, I picked that up, uh, to add on to my flesh eater courts. I was thinking maybe, you know, start up some flesh eater courts, right? But then again, I started hesitating. I was painting up some space wolves. I really didn't get into it. Uh, and then finally, uh, I was actually painting up, I was in CK studios and I was painting up or starting my project for my night Titan just began the night Titan. And, uh, I took my night Titan over there. Uh, and I, I was in a class with Mr. Mr. Vince Ventruella and he said, you know, hey, you know, I, I really want to paint up the Skaven in this huge box set. And, you know, I had flesh eater quartz. I was like, well, okay. I mean, there goes some flesh eater quartz. I can paint up some flesh eater quartz. I, I got some flesh eater quartz at home. I, I can make that happen, right? So I split the box with him. And recently I was thinking about what new project I should take on. Um, should I go Stormcast Eternals or, you know, should I do something else? And Vince told me, you know what, you should really, really do the Flesh Eater Quartz because they're super simple to speed paint and you know, who cares? Experiment, have some fun. And that's what I started doing and I'm having a blast. This stuff is super fun to paint, I gotta tell you, uh, because you know, you get a smidget here, a smidget there. I mean, they're dirty, it, it happens, right? Um, but you know, here is what I did <laughs> to paint up my flesh eater quartz to my, what I call a tabletop standard for me. All right, well, I hope you enjoy. All righty, so let's start up with some Crypt Horrors, the main body. All right, so what I do is Stino Res Primer. I do a green primer uh, and I just base coat everything. Athonian Camo Shade is next from Citadel Shades and I try to get like a reverse zenithal highlighting where I'm trying to just get the, the shadows from underneath um, uh, each time and uh, underneath the shadows. And I try to decide where the shadows are going to be. And using a shade really tints um, the model and I love using shades through an airbrush. Now I'm also gonna go through the back itself because all the crypt horrors that I do have like a dark green back to them. And it's just something I wanted to try out and I think it worked out pretty successfully. And I like the way the two tone varies. Now, differentiating that from the shadows, uh, the back, I hit it with a lot more uh, fade. So you can see it's a lot darker uh, than the shadows itself. And again, using shades actually lends itself to gradually bringing up a tint onto uh, a surface and having a gradient with it. So that's why I really love using them. Uh, similarly to contrast paints who do a pretty much similar job in doing this. And I don't have many contrast paints yet in order to play with them. Karaberg Crimson is next. And the reason why I selected Karaberg Crimson is because I really wanted some red coming through that flesh that's connecting to the really, really gross, awesomely gross spinal cord, which is ripping out of his uh, body, you know. So, 
um, definitely in time for Halloween, uh, this tutorial, because it is about as creepy as you can get. Next up, I do some masking. I use some silly putty to mask up and I hit bone areas, uh, bone white. Now, I like to use an airbrush for bone white because it just saves me a lot of time of building up coats with white. If you've ever painted white before, you understand that white is a pretty much of a pain in the butt color because you have to do many, many very light coats in order to build it up slowly so you don't leave any brush lines or anything like that. Now freehand, I'm going to um, airbrush some of these spinal cords in the back, trying not to get overzealous with it. A green Steinal Res primer with a bone white, and I try to just make some highlights. In hindsight, I would use more bone white because I don't think the highlights came out as pronounced as I wanted it to. Now some bone white uh, Vallejo game color, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the process of building up and the difference between airbrushing and painting white. Um, it took me about 10 coats to get this white the way I wanted to. It's super diluted. Um, and I'm just whisking some off as I apply it. And I'm going to see, there's, I'll show you exactly what I mean by, you know, really bringing it up. Now, if this is the ugly phase. It's going to look patchy. It's going to look ugly. So if you're painting white and getting frustrated because you're not passing it in one coat, and if you do pass it in one coat and it actually has coverage, that, that it looks like, you know, you can see the brush lines and you're not happy with it. And that's because it took me about 10 coats to get where you see it right now, eating all the areas that I need bone and really taking a long time. But you know, this, this process is essential because you really want to get all those pieces that you missed that you couldn't get with the airbrush. If you're following along with this tutorial, you want to do that as well. So you really need to poke, pick out the bone white bits. Uh, and since, you know, using it translucently, uh, you're going to want to do multiple, multiple coats again, 10 coats to get it to where it's at. And I think I applied about five more coats on top of it after that. Uh, Seraphon Sepia is next, and uh, I'm just getting the, the areas of bone, uh, so it's just not bleached. And at this point, I'm not really concerned about getting it through the skin. In fact, uh, I try to get it through the skin where the bone is actually appearing through the skin because it just like darkens up that area, and it looks like it's really bruised. Uh, so yeah, and I'm gonna get it with, with more colors other than just brown. But I like the brown because uh, really it's a contrasting color to that green. Um, I'm going to get that big old bone. Uh, I get a little bit overzealous right here. Uh, you may want to taper it back just a bit. I mean, I'm fine with it because I know that I'm learning and this is like a new army for me. Um, and you see me at the beginning stages of this because I wanted to do some content with it. Um, after I get like several of these under my belt, um, I might do it. Yeah, different tutorial, um, maybe a different skin color, but I'm going to show you what I've ever I've learned. And this is a journey. And I thank you for coming with me on this journey of painting so you can see the process itself. Um, Juchi Violet, you can see the process of me becoming a better painter uh, as I keep doing these tutorials. You know, this is helping me as much as and hopefully it's helping you. But it, it, this is definitely this process of making videos is helping me because it's actually keeping me high. Hobbying. It keeps me painting. Now I'm using purple here because I kind of want to stain it purple. Like I have that rotten purple skin. Kind of a little backfired on me because, you know, it doesn't really look purplish. It just kind of blended in with the red there. So in hindsight, I'll probably do some FW ink purple to really get the purple highlights next time I wanted to do that instead of Druchi Violet. But I mean, it doesn't look bad. It looks pretty bruised, but it just looks. Oh man, to me, I want to try something different next time. So I'm going to try a different purple uh, next time. If you do like this look, then go for the Drucci Violet. And this is what I love about painting. There are so many different paths you can take. There's not one prescripted path. So, and that's the joy of art. Uh, everybody has their own style. So, you know, I really just, I just didn't, I'm not feeling the, that it's, that much of a contrasting purple, but it looks pretty bruised right there. All right, so I'm gonna do some gloss varnish mixed in with a lot of water because I want it to be subtly gloss, not overtly gloss. Um, you can just put more gloss varnish on it if you want to. You could also use this step at the end and it doesn't hurt, varnish is varnish, you know, so it's uh, it's clear. So you can hit that up on the end if you want to. Uh, but I just wanted to dilute it just so I can be like somewhat glossy and not completely. Now it's wet, obviously, so it does look glossy, but that's what it would look if you just did pure gloss. 
gloss coat. There it is dry, so you can see it different. Okay, so uh, Vallejo Game Ink Purple with some red, and I kind of mixed those two together, um, and I put some gloss medium uh, with some bone white, and I kind of load the brush there, and I'm, I'm using two brush blending here, where I'm just applying with one brush and kind of feathering out with the second brush. Somber gray is next uh, once you get all the edges of those bones. So see how, see how messed up and uh, bloody those those where the bone enters the skin looks. That's exactly what I was going for. All right, this somber gray, I'm just going to hit on the um, hair. It looks like it is hair, but I'm just, you know, assuming that it's clothes. I don't know. Uh, but I'm hitting it with gray because I, I didn't want it to be stark red. Now, I am going to do red when it comes to the back of the legs. Uh, but I did want to hit that gray uh as well and the reason why i do that i think it just adds a little bit of depth i'm not I'm, i haven't really tested it but i think it has a bit of uh depth to it so next i'm gonna hit none oil on the back and i did the whole thing gray just to see how it would be on gray but i'm gonna hit it with red later on because i just didn't like the way those hind quarters look with the uh gray with the black now if you do like the way that looks i advise you just to go for it and do that step right there and just leave it like that if you like it all right cardboard crimson right now I'm just getting into the mouth and this is one of the delights of having uh flesh eater quartz you know usually i i you know do the pinkish and then do a little bit of cardboard crimson on top of it and then do, do in between the teeth but this i just want straight cardboard crimson and kind of loaded it up and kind of pushed it in there and having some fun mephiston red i i did the mephiston red again because i wanted to cover it if you like it with the the black with the the white you can keep it but i kind of wanted it to be a little bit of traditional here like i saw a poster and i saw the red i kind of wanted to try the red so i went mephiston red again this step right here you can actually skip if you wanted to but if you wanted the red and go for the red with there. I started with the Mephiston red and then Carbrook and Crimson uh, just to dilute it. The good thing about this is when I did the Nun Oil before, it kind of traced and black lined the hair itself and it did it for me by doing that other additional step. Could I have black lined it and, and probably it'd be a lot easier? Possibly. So if you do want to um, outline these hairs, you can go back with either, you know, um, well, with a pen or, you know, you can do it with your paintbrush and do some ink and just black line around the edges of that hair there just to outline it. But, you know, it just it was just a benefit by doing the nun oil and that gray, somber gray before that I actually had the outline for it. But you can see that I'm generously putting on the Carabird Crimson. Okay, red game ink. Now, when I do the blush on the cheek, a lot of people ask me, how do you get those subtle blushes? Look how diluted this is. This is supremely diluted. Um, and I have a drop there of some medium any medium will do because it's going to cut back the water tension you can do matte medium you could do flow aid i did some flow aid in there and and you could definitely do some um glaze medium that would help you as well either one anyone they all kind of work for this process and i'm just just lightly very very lightly bringing up some red color in the face and the reason why is because we want to humanize things and uh having some red cheeks there that definitely humanizes it okay some bone white just picking out the, the dips of the teeth uh the carbon crimson's in the background so it just really outlines that it makes it super easy you can see how i do it next is Avalon sunset and this is what i'm doing yellow eyes because i because yellow eyes <laughs> That's why, because I felt like it. You can do them actually any color that you want. If you wanted to do it white, if you want to put an eyeball in the middle, you can do that as well. Um, all my other tutorials have like eyeballs. I'll show you how you do it. In fact, my last one has an eyeball on it when I did a Thunderwolf Cavalry video. Um, you can check that one out uh, if you want to see where I did the eyes. But, you know, it's rather simple. Uh, and I wanted to keep this simple. So all my, um, if I can, all my... Flesh Eater Quartz will just have yellow eyes and call it a day, make it my life easier. Again, I'm sort of speed painting this, so it's pretty um, pretty easy for me. Of course, you could take this all to the next level if you wanted to. Uh, I wanted to get the Druchi Violet just to get to more shadows and emphasize the shadows underneath each one of those muscles. And I'm gonna keep doing that throughout um, and just you know making it darker. And you can darken this as much as you possibly can. In hindsight, I, I should have gone a little bit more uh, darker with the with the Jerchi Violet, do a couple more coats, but like I said, I'm learning 
and it was a process and I'm not gonna go back and redo it when I have like a whole bunch more to do that I can definitely uh, paint up as well. Fist on Red, uh, and I mixed that in with some uh, bone white and I, I really wanted to make this scar pronounced like a pinkish scar. I would say 50-50, but you know, I didn't really measure honestly. I just took a dip of this, a dip of that, put it on the web palette and just went through it. Really does help if you uh, outline that as well. All right, so time for the base. The model is done. See how quick that was? Um, I did the basing materials. I rolled out some green stuff and I used Green Stuff World's rolling pin for flagstone bases. Um, I also used uh, some sand that I got, some dry earth from AK Interactive diorama stuff. Uh, I used the Citadel skull for that, some rocks for my gravel, and definitely I used some um, urban rubble that I got from White Metal Games to make that base right there. Uh, Stano Res Black Primer to prime it up, uh, some gray Stano Res Primer to just pick out each one of those flagstones. And again, this is just takes practice. You guys gotta keep doing it until you can get the control like that. If you want, draw a whole bunch of small little circles on a piece of paper and with your airbrush, just try to hit just the circles and keep doing it. Like print out a page of 100 circles and just keep on hitting it until you get that control in. And that's an excellent in practice for this. I actually did that in airbrushing class where I had a whole bunch of circles and people had to actually uh, do that. They actually had some work to do when it came to airbrushing. Um, and then I'm just going to get the surrounding areas, getting some shadow, but you know, leaving some grates and some highlights. This way I had some variation to the ground and just randomly hitting here, hitting there, creating hot spots here and there. Um, just so, just so I could have that definitely on the skull as well. Cold gray is next. Uh, I just want to hit the center of those stones very, very lightly, just so I can have a super highlight to it. Um, Alternatively, you can add some white to the gray primer and that'll also have a very similar effect. Some white ink, FW white ink was always help uh, to be able to do that if you want to, to get the stream highlight. Agrax Earthshade is next. I'm just tinting the ground itself um, just to have, again, a depth to it. Now, I did uh, put some brown primer on on top of this and in hindsight, maybe do the brown um, primer first and then do this. Uh, if you wanted to, but there's no hard and fast rule. However you do brown, you can do brown. And I'm doing some earth where it meets the cobblestone. So I'm just simulating a, a broken, I don't know, like a cemetery or something like that. And that's what I was thinking of and when I when I painted this up. Again, using those shades, using that slow transition to bring it up. You're not using, I'm using the wash unintentionally, like unwashed. <laughs> You're like, I guess, not a non-wash, uh, non-traditional way to do it. Some bone white hitting from Xenathel just to get that skull and getting that transition. Again, stark white, bleached white has been there forever. Uh, all the insects and stuff cleaned it completely. So there's no like blood or anything else on there. So I wanted that bleach white and just that Xenathel really does make a difference. All right, next up is some Methonian camo shade. And I'm just gonna go some mossy stuff on the on the stone. This is again, this rock there I got from the end of my driveway, kind of like plucked it down there and painted over it so, so I can integrate it with the base. And I wanted some mossy stuff, so I'm just gonna hit some of the areas that seem lighter. I'm just gonna hit some green in there. Um, and just to add some variation, you know, a little goes a long way. I might hit a flagstone or two just to bring it up so that some moss has grown on it. And again, giving that creepy mossy vibe to it is where, you know, I really enjoy. Um, I'm trying to do that, trying to give that mossy vibe to it, trying to give multi layers to my bases, but you know, understated and over underwhelm it as a whole because I want the miniature to actually shine and the base just to be something you notice after you notice the miniature itself. Alrighty, um, yep, just bringing up trying to get it dark in the middle because that's exactly where I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna put a tuft in there. And I kind of wanted to, to glow a little bit of green. I don't know, that was the idea behind it. I don't know how effective it was uh, for that particular flagstone. But uh, yeah, just to do a little something different. I noticed that when I rolled it out, it didn't go 100% perfectly deep. So yeah, I kind of want to like cover that little flagstone right there. I mean, alternatively, you could just pull it out. Some Caraburg Crimson is next. Uh, just so, so you have some soaked in blood on the base. 
That's what I was thinking. It's just some soaked in blood on there. Uh, just a little bit of stain, like somebody stained it and the water washed it away a long time ago. A little bit on the rock as well, uh, just to get that variation. Again, having multiple colors. I do like that multiple colors thing. And I did that on the base that I gave away. So just playing around with that. See, using what I did while playing around with something in order to help me. Uh, some brown from Standardized Primer, uh, just to get that. It really does a good job at putting and making it look like earth, like brown earth i don't know um great base uh great color i like that style or primer and i do like because it, it it's like flat so there you go that's pretty muddy uh some black primer now and i'm just gonna go around the edges right there uh just freestyling it <laughs> black is the color for my um nations and agosh army black rim so that's what i do for all my uh death now I use a brown for my Stormcast Eternals, and then I use a gray for my um, 40k army, my Space Wolves. So we have those. So yeah, Black Ring Base for Death Army. That's the way I do it. Next, Drakenoff Nightshade. And uh, you notice that my finger, my pinky is actually holding on to the pill bottle as I do this to steady my hand and to do some straight lines. And I'm just getting into the recesses in there, just drawing some straight lines with my one happy brush. My one happy brush is the brush that I use. And I got it from Amazon, one happy brush. And um, I bought like a 50 pack of it, still use it. They're my workhorse. I use that for just about everything and then I hit the um, Windsor and Newton Series 7s for, you know, eyes or anything specific or black lining or something like, you know, that I have to get the fine detail in because it has a great point and I just don't want to mess up the points of my brushes. Although, you know, 11 bucks and I can get another one. It's not a huge uh, big deal or anything like that. Alrighty. Um, so, yeah, trying to get those in. Looking great. Um those black lines because it adds depth to it you know i really do try to avoid when i'm painting uh, airbrushing the uh crevices i don't 100 percent get that so this reinforces all those lines um again that little divot right there i'm going to put a tuft on it because whenever you make mistakes hey you can cover it why not <laughs> And not really a mistake. It's just when I press down, I guess I didn't press down hard enough right there. I didn't flatten it out enough that it created a divot. But I do like the divots because in real life, when you have flagstones, they have divots. So, you know, it just makes it look realistic. It's not supposed to be perfect. So you go with the flow when it comes to these things. You know, you don't you don't harp on, oh my gosh, it's not perfect because what is perfect? Okay, I put the model in there, put the tuft in there, and we're getting to the end of the video. Um, and always put some, you know, Thonian camo shades on your top just don't throw it in there again just trying to cover up that little i guess you can call a mistake <laughs> um and that is the final process well i hope you enjoy this video catch you on the outro Well, there you have it. Super simple to paint up, really quick paint job, and I think I'm gonna fly through these flesh eater courts and flesh out my army. Eh, see what I did there? <laughs> well, if you like this video, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paintbrush. <laughs>